You've gone through interviews at a big tech company and other recruiter has reached out and said, we're going to extend an offer for you. So what happens now and why do you need to wait? Can you negotiate? I've been on the other side of the table while I was a hiring manager at Uber and I'm going to give you some behind the scenes information on what's going on and what levers you can pull. Hey, this is Gary Gay with The Pragmatic Engineer. It's been a while since I uploaded because I was busy writing my book, Building Mobile Apps at Scale. This book is completely free to download until the 31st of May. So if you're a mobile engineer or you work with mobile engineers, grab it now. And this video will be a response to an email I got. They're saying, hey, I'm a software engineer. I'm writing because I got a call from Uber today and they're gonna offer me a software engineering position. I'm thrilled. I started in preparation with some of the recommendations and I have a question, do you have recommendations for this offer stage? I haven't received the compensation package yet. I was told they start preparing tomorrow. I know you said bonus and equity tend to be a good chunk of compensation. Is that where I should be focusing my energy on negotiation? Well, first, congratulations, Thrilled Software Engineer. It is difficult to go through any interview process at any of the big tech companies. And as I did a video before, big tech hiring is conservative. So if you've got an offer, that means the interview panel is pretty certain you're gonna work out really great at this company. Now we're gonna walk through three things. First, some insider information on what is going on behind the scenes. Second, we're going to walk through an actual offer that was similar to the offer that I got on what kind of details you're going to list out and what a typical big tech offer looks like. And then we're going to talk about what you can and cannot negotiate. So what is going on inside the company and why is the recruiter not sending over an offer already? Why are they telling that they're going to send you an offer? Right now, you're probably working with a pretty eager or good recruiter who lets you know exactly as things happen because they don't want to lose you. What has definitely happened is there has been a debrief on the interview, which means that all the interviewers got together in a room, including a recruiter, and they talked through their feedback. At companies like Uber, people typically do thumbs down, thumbs up, double thumbs up, double thumbs down, and then they all talk over on what kind of signals they gathered. And then they come to a recommendation. At the likes of Uber, typically a bar raiser would lead the interview and the hiring manager would have an ultimate say of is this a hire or a non-hire. Now this has been done and the panel has recommended a hire decision. This was the point where the recruiter probably sent you an email saying we are going to offer you a position and we'll start preparing the compensation offer. So at this point, a couple of things happen at large tech companies like Uber, Google, Facebook, etc. First, in some organizations, the recruiter might need to send an approval for the head of the organization. So at Uber, for example, I was in the money organization, which had a director heading up the whole organization. And whenever we made an offer for someone, so my directors requested that we send over a summary with the signals we gathered, where this person will start, sometimes seniority ratios on the team, and would approve it about 99% of the time. Sometimes they might have questions that we would need to answer. And for the most part, this is a formal step. So what would an email like this look like? I just wrote something that me or the recruiter would send to the organization lead. And it goes something like this. Approval needed for senior software engineer on the Xeno team. And this could be senior software, eng2, staff software, whatever the level is. Hey, org lead, we'd like to send an offer for a senior software engineer for whatever the name of this person is. Then there's a quick summary of the experience of this person, of the panel, how the panel did. In this case, we're saying it was an anonymous yes. You specify which team they join and which manager they would report. Organization leads have multiple managers reporting to them. At Uber, we did care about seniority and non-seniority ratio, and this was to make sure there's enough mentoring for non-senior engineers. So sometimes we would not make hires for non-senior levels if we did not have the ratio for senior engineers to provide this mentoring. Then there will be a summary of the debrief. In this case, let's just say that the coding was solved performance with some details here. Let's say we had two system design interviews and the second was a, was a very strong yes. On a hiring manager, there's a note that this person has strong product preference over a platform and is interested in high visibility work. And here's from Bar Razor. And then all the debrief notes are attached. So this is pages long as the documentation. Now the point of this summary is to give some context of what is the general profile of this person, which team is this person going to go to, and any additional information that's worth knowing at a managerial level. Now, why would you need to send this over to the organizational lead? I've not seen organizational leads block a hire. However, sometimes they do ask questions. For example, if multiple teams are hiring in the same location, and let's say we have a senior hire and it's not going to the team that needs people the most, they would ask, why is it not going to this team that needs people the most? There might be questions on seniority ratio. There might be questions on platform versus product preference or experience. Now, in 9% of the cases, the response of this email would be like this. Approved. Signature. That's it. In some rare cases, you might get a comment back. For example, approved, looks like a great hire. Please set up a one-on-one -on -one with this person on myself following their first month, maybe because they saw something that they want to talk with them about. But yeah, it's just an approval. 
However, this approval sometimes can take a day or two to arrive, especially if you're in a different location. So for example, I was based in Amsterdam and my approvals had to happen in San Francisco. So this might add 24 hours to this process. Now, once you have this approval, the recruiter can go and request an offer from the compensation team. And if you've not been inside the managerial chain of big tech companies, you might be thinking compensation team, like how does that work? Well, in most places, there is a central compensation team that makes sure that the offers are in certain bands, that the bands are updated as the market changes. And in the case of places like Uber, there's also equal pay. So while I worked at Uber, the company introduced this concept of equal pay, which meant that everyone will get the same offer, the same base salary, the same stock grants for the same level. I've seen this play out on my team. If two senior software engineers started in a similar time period, they would have exactly the same salary and same goes across different levels. And to make this happen, you need to have a central compensation team. If you apply to a local startup, which is a small company and the CEO is making the offers, the CEO might just come up with however much they wanna pay you and they're gonna do this by asking what your salary is. Large companies like Uber and some other places that have equal pay in place or have bans in place, they're often not gonna ask you about your salary expectations. They will tell you, here's our standard offer. And to do this, the recruiter would send an email like this to the compensation team. Hi, comp team, can I please request a package for senior engineer on this and this location for team Zeno? Here's a cost center. This person will need a relocation and does not have competing offers we can proceed with the standard offer. Now the recruiter is giving some input to the compensation team to come up with an offer. And the inputs will be, does this person need relocation? Because in that case, there will be a relocation budget that they need to allocate for. Do they have competing offers or do they have a higher offer? The recruiter talks to someone who's coming from a place that is known to pay higher than the current company. They might include this as well. So they might say, this person is currently at Google at this and this compensation, or they have a competing offer with this kind of salary rate. And the compensation team might take that into account as they put together the package, they might add it into the equity or to the sign on bonus. Now there's a question of should you make up offers that don't exist or compensation that you don't have. And I'll tell you that bluffing is a strategy and it can work for people, but there's no better strategy to back things up with real data. The best way to get a great offer from a company like Uber and other tech companies is have other offers and tell the recruiters, these are my offers. And then they're going to do the best they can to match. Sometimes they will not be able to do that. After sending the offer, the recruiter has to wait. And don't forget, this compensation team is often also central. They might be based in a different location. It does take time to get the offer. And this is what the recruiter meant when they said that they're gonna start preparing the offer tomorrow. They cannot share numbers yet because they haven't gotten the numbers from the central team that they can actually present as an offer. And this is why it might take a couple of days. So you might think, why did the recruiter tell this person that they're gonna get an offer if they don't have an offer yet? It's because they wanna make sure that this person is engaged. If you are having other interviews, you can also let those people know, hey, I'm gonna get an offer from this company. And if you're getting offers in the meantime, just let your recruiter know because they're gonna pass it on to the central compensation team and add it as a variable. So once the central compensation team comes back, they're just going to send an email, hey recruiter, attaches the offer, all the best comps. And with that, we're getting to the second point of the video. What does a typical offer look like? And I'm going to share a modified version of an offer that I got when I joined Uber. I'm just going to not give specific numbers because the numbers are not the point of this offer and those numbers will vary wildly if you're getting an offer in Amsterdam, in some other European city, in India, in the US and Canada, etc. But the structure will be similar at big tech companies. Here's what the recruiter will put together as an email based on the offer that they've just gotten. It'll be where it's something, hey, let me tell you that we'll be sending the offer for employment for this and this level and this and this locations, yada, yada, yada. Until the ink has dried on the paper, these things are not final basically. And here's the basic terms. Here's your start date. Here's the contract terms. Here's your gross salary. Here's equity, which we will ask the, the board of directors to grant. And an important thing that a lot of people get confused about is they're not being promised equity. It's being told that the board of directors will have to grant. And this is completely standard with how equity works. Once you join, that equity document does get in front of the board of directors that might only happen once a month or something like that. And they have to approve it. When they do, you get it issued. It doesn't really matter that there's a delay because you typically have a one-year cliff anyway. If you want to know more about how equity works at Big Tech, I have an article that details concepts like cutoff period, vesting, clawbacks, and so on. Performance bonus, outlining the bonus term. Some companies like Uber do tell you upfront what your bonus target is. Not all companies do this, but they're also very clear about this is not a guarantee. This is just a target and you might not get it if your performance does not warrant it. And if you do great and you're perceived as a great performer, you might get a lot more as well. 
And then a list of perks, things like phone reimbursement, company computer. I don't know a single big tech company that doesn't give you a laptop of your choice, typically a MacBook, healthcare, gym membership, and all sorts of other perks that they might list. Uber actually had more perks than this. They had Uber credits, travel insurance, different membership cards, and so on, but they didn't list it out in the offer. Relocation reimbursement, if you need to move, the company will often offer to match expenses up to a certain amount. Please send some details so we finalize the contract and welcome to the team. After a few days, this is the type of document that you should be expecting from the recruiter. The only thing you can do during this period is let them know if there's additional information that might move the offer upwards. Typically, competing offers, your current compensation if it's high, current unvested stock, and so on. Once you get an offer, the company is waiting for you to say yay or nay. And I suggest you do two things. One, if you're a little bit unsure about the company culture, what you're going to be doing, reverse interview your future manager or your future team members. Make a list of all the things that are important to you. This might be career growth, type of work you're going to be working on, mentorship, the type of people you'll be working with, and so on. Make your list and ask it from them. I did this before I joined Uber and I'm really glad I did. And I did it because during the interview, I got a sense of the type of work that will be happening, but I didn't know what I would be doing, exactly what team I would be going on, and what career opportunities I would have. And I wanted to get a better feel for my future manager. Reverse interviewing really helped me do this, and my manager jumped on a call almost immediately. The other part is negotiating compensation. Professional courtesy says that you do have one round of negotiations that is pretty accepted. So the company gives you an offer, and you come back and say, I'm really excited to work here. I'm looking forward to the team. I loved everything about this, but there are these and these things. Could we change this? And if we do, I'll be happy to sign on the spot. Now, what are the things that you might want to negotiate? It could be anything, which means base salary, equity, and bonus. But in practice, different companies might be able to negotiate on different things. So for a fact, I can tell you at Uber, it's very, very hard to negotiate on base salary because of equal pay. Now, equity is something that you can negotiate if you have leverage. This means having a competing offer, having existing unvested equity at your current company, and of course, having the leverage of walking away. If you're dead set that you're not gonna go work somewhere without at least a certain total compensation level, you can be clear with the recruiter saying, this is what I'm looking for, and if we cannot match this, I'm not sure I'll be able to continue. But I would only advise to do this if you're very serious about it. Now, if you don't have a higher existing package or competing offer, the part that is easiest to negotiate is a sign-on bonus. If your offer does not already have a sign-on bonus, you can turn around and say that you're excited about the team, excited about the opportunity, excited to be part of the team. The one thing that would make you sign immediately is if we could add a signing bonus to this contract. And the reason for this is you're leaving cash on the table at your current company from your current bonus that you would receive anyway. This is a very common ask and you can phrase it in different ways. Companies like Uber often do grant 10K, 20K for senior engineering levels. It, it might be even a bit higher if you have leverage, which goes back to current package or competing package. So see what the total package is. If it's under what you're making, you have a lot of leverage to negotiate on equity and on signing bonuses. If it's far above what you're currently making at all your other offers, you might be able to negotiate with the signing bonus. It is worth a question. It can be a question that yields 10 grand or more extra in the first year. Just be positive and professional about phrasing this. The things that you're not gonna be able to negotiate is equity vesting terms, the type of your contract. These are typically just standard across big tech. If you're getting a really weird contract set up, you might be able to challenge that, but typically these are pretty normal. If you do get to the offer stage, congratulations. And most of what I talked about was specific to Uber, but it can be generalized to almost all large tech companies. They work in very similar ways. Don't forget to negotiate, reverse interview your team if you're unsure, and subscribe to this channel for more content on software for engineering and engineering management. I hope it was useful to see what's going on behind the scenes at Big Tech. Thanks.